Hello world, Tom Tinker DIY here. And in this video we're going to look at the enclosure and the parts that goes into the uh, DC watt meter system that I bought. Uh, I bought a kit on eBay um, for I think it was under 20 bucks, maybe 15 bucks, that had a 100 amp shunt and a, an electronics box that had a display on it that could show you your voltage, your amperage, your wattage, and it would also show a cumulative uh, watt hour um, that was being used up. And so um, while it was less important to have those features for the portable mini Powerwall project, um, the portable Powerwall project, which is a, a much bigger 2000 watt system, um, it was a little more important to have it for that because the inverter for that system doesn't have a built-in uh, wattage output or voltage input display built onto the unit. Uh, to, so to have some kind of system which I could glance at to see how the system is doing uh, was important to have. Plus it's also good because I can use um, this system to track how much power I'm using out of either system, the 300 watt mini unit or the 2000 watt uh, portable unit. Uh, and being able to judge how much capacity I'm able to use out of those systems. So um, one of the things I wanted to do for this project as you saw in the beginning part of this video was looking at a time lapse of uh, making a 3D model of an enclosure for this system uh, that you then also saw some time lapse footage of, of it being 3D printed. Well, things never go exactly right the very first shot. You know, the advantages of 3D printing is the rapid prototyping. Um, and so you saw me lay out some, some initial designs. Um, and this was the first, the first print of the top plate. Uh, and even before I printed this, if you, paid, if you could see enough detail from that time lapse, uh, I even made some minor changes to, to cut off the, the rounded here the pieces here on the end uh, so that the screw is a little more exposed as it goes through the corners to, to hold everything down. Um, so that was a minor change that happened before I even uh, printed this first piece and then when I printed this first piece uh, I had just put in some new filament. Uh, it was this black PLA uh, from Hatchbox I believe um, and um, I needed to, to change some settings for my 3D printer to print this filament versus some filament I had on there previously and I forgot to make one important change and so while this print looks good um, it's actually over extruded uh, it, so the dimensions here are about a millimeter too small for this opening on both directions the holes for the mounting screws are about a millimeter too small and in for the, to be able to put the screws through and so um, I had to print another one and one of the things at least while I had this part what to look at was I noticed that there's wire terminals on the side of the junction of the electronics box and I realized that with this really thick um, border here with this really thick plate uh, it was gonna make it maybe a little interesting to try to get the, the wires into that to those connections so uh, I went in and I created a 45 degree chamfer uh, that goes in about 5 millimeters um, into the depth of this and 5 millimeters across the face so it creates a nice easy ramp for the wires to get into those junctions. So uh, having to make those two changes um, from this piece I went ahead and printed another one and that's what we can see here on this plate and undo these screws. These are M4 by 25 millimeter overall length uh, screws. Uh, these are just what I had laying around. There wasn't a particular um, uh, reason why I chose these over something else. Um, so this is where you can see here where I created those fillets uh, where it goes in and allows plenty of space now for the wiring to fit in here. Um, and then of course now the unit can fit in here. Now it's just a kind of a friction fit so it slides in and out um, just like that right now. Uh, once this all gets done I'll probably put a couple dabs of super glue just to, have to make sure that it stays in place. Um, but there you go. So that's that piece done. Um, and then this was the first print of the lower section and uh, I am intending to use two XT90 
connectors because again this is also going to work for the 2000 watt system so I wanted to go ahead and build the internals of this uh, watt meter to handle the 100 amps of current that that system could pull up to uh, actually it's more like 90 but I went ahead and built it for 100 just to round up um, and so this is going to use a uh, dual strand 8 gauge um, red positive on on this opening and then dual 8 gauge uh, black uh, stranded on on this side uh, for, for furthest away for this will be the front hopefully and you know that'll work for the back and then inside the enclosure I created this these little pedestals and that's what the shunt uh, will mount to with the bolts that it came with so the shunt fits down into there and will bolt against uh, those openings um, but I realized that um, the bolts that came with the shunt here when those are fully in there um, these bolts will actually hit the XC90 uh, connector that you know comes into the second spot so the negative side so um, I had to go back and do some minor design changes for for the box um, which is this box here which I opened up 10 millimeters of extra space. I didn't change the outside dimensions at all. I just opened up the, the inside dimensions by 10 millimeters and I moved the, the mounting posts for the shunt uh, back appropriately so that it gives me plenty of clearance uh, for the XT90 connectors and wiring that's gonna come sticking through here. Um, so that works. And then I also put some holes in this box just because I'm not sure how much heat I'm going to be expecting um, that could, go on inside of this uh, unit when it's when it's all closed up so I just went ahead and put some vent holes in it uh, just so that I could get some airflow some passive airflow through it and hopefully not run into any heating issues or at least if there are heating issues uh, I'll at least now be able to, to feel it radiating through those holes so um, this is the final product for the box this is the final product for the for the lid for now um, the two fit together they screw down um, these brass inserts, uh, they're M4 inserts for the M4 threads on these screws. And uh, what's cool about these is that you can just take your soldering iron, uh, stick it down through the hole, and just slowly press down the threaded insert into the plastic. The heat from the soldering iron will, will heat up the threaded insert, which will make the PLA plastic or ABS plastic, if you were printing in ABS, um, give way and allow the threaded insert to slowly work its way in you just be very careful make sure that you're trying to push it in um, as straight as possible so it's not getting in there at an angle and then when you pull the iron away in a few seconds um, the PLA will will get hard again and it will hold those threaded inserts in place so that's how I'm able to um, screw the two pieces together with some hardware so that's a, a look at the design and kind of looking at the parts that are going into this. And uh, now I want to actually start working on putting everything together. So this is the shunt. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to start putting these pieces. Oh, that thing's heavy. Um, I'm trying not to drop it. And so we're going to go ahead and... These are some sensing wires. Uh, I think this is detecting uh, a voltage drop um, across the, the two sides of the system here. I'm not 100% sure how shunts work. I just have a, a vague understanding of it, so don't quote me on it. And here's the other wire. That's gonna go over here into that hole with this screw right here. And, and I did all the, the wiring and soldering work in advance of this video, which you'll probably get to see a time lapse of here toward the end of it, um, just so that you can see some of that in action. Um, so there we go. We have those two pieces done. Now we're going to take the bolts and we're going to stick them through this way and this way. We will go ahead and, you know, I'm not sure how to, to go from here. Um, I know that because, so I have to put the shunt into its spot and then I have to be able to put these in here. Um, so 
So I guess maybe let's maybe put the shunt in first. And, as, and if you can look inside of here, the the bolt the bolt heads are trapped between the posts and the outside wall of the box. Um, and we're gonna push that in down straight. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Uh, let's see here. Make sure that eh, that gets pushed down even flat. Um, so. The shunt is now in there. I guess maybe let's see if we can put this piece in first. Um, and I think I had intended for it to go like this, so we will take that. We'll take that uh, wire for the control box. Stick it in there. There we go. That slides in. Pull the wire up out of the way. Stick the other XT90 through its hole and just kind of. Just kind of try to center it a bit there. Um, and so I guess that will do. And then if we take this one, uh, and as you can see here, they're meant to overlap. I put ring terminals on the end of these to go on those bolts. Um, so we will take this one, we will stick it through this side, and we will get that into that hole a bit and then we will go ahead and get these on here okay um so that's there uh let's see if we can get the nut to start threading on oops little tight box to, to try to, to get this much work to get fit down in there. Uh, let's see if we can... No, that's not going to do. Well, here is a design flaw right off the bat. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to tighten all this stuff down. I think I'll have to try tightening it down here in a little bit. Um, I just want to make sure I get some turns on that screw so that it doesn't come off, and I guess that will have to do. Um, and then this wire, we'll have to stick that. It's a little bit longer than I had and planned on it being. That one has slipped out a little bit. So I'll try putting it back through. Okay. And this is why I typically do all the heavy work <laughs> off, not on video, uh, so that not having to, to fight this stuff, you know, on camera and trying to waste your guys' time. So I apologize a bit for that. Um, get some more turns on that. It was a little loose. All right. So, all right. We're going to try putting this other piece in here. Uh, let's see if we can take the lower one and thread it between the other ones here. And give it a little encouragement, push it in. And let's see if we can get it down on the stud. This is getting to be a bit tight in here with all this big heavy wiring in here. It's the first time I've actually tried getting everything in here like this. So there's that one. See if we can get this one to go in. Uh, I need to give that a little extra slack to get over there. And there we go. So that's that. See if we can just kind of help push those down. Take the nut here. And this is going to be interesting trying to figure out how to get in here and um, and, and tighten these nuts so it, it gets tight. Uh, so I will have to do that off of video for you for you guys just to not waste your time and I'll get all this um, all put together and we will start doing some testings and see how things are working out and um, one last thing I do want to uh, do for you guys before 
I wrap up the video here is I wanted to show you the wiring diagram for this system. Um, so the battery will come in um, in this direction back here. So the shunt is on the far side of the box. Um, power is intending to come in here on the left side. Um, and so the, the battery is here and uh, it gets a, just a, a tap that goes off into this lower terminal and basically the positive wire coming off the battery just bypasses the shunt and everything else so it just gets a small uh, voltage reference off of off the battery here and then the rest of it just bypasses which is why the red wire uh, inside of there just runs straight through and is not doing any um, any weird stuff. Uh, the ground from the battery comes in and will go into the power side of the shunt and will then also create a tap off into the second terminal here. The These little wires that you saw me put on first, these will then go to the um, third tap here on the terminal um, and it looks like the one closest to the battery ground will go into this uh, third position and then the fourth position goes to the one further from the battery ground and then the other end of the shunt for the power side which is for these big heavy cables um, that'll then connect through to the other side so that's a look at this watt system um, you're not going to get a chance to see it working in this video maybe in the next video I'll give it a chance uh, for you guys to see how this is working what I would love to do with this is um, I want to so the the lights and the soldering iron back there and everything I've been doing today uh, has been operating off of um, the mini power wall battery pack that you see here um, and the uh, it's been running great it's been running all day and I've been putting very a very light load on it all day it's been under 100 watts uh, for everything that I've been doing like the soldering iron pulls 40 to 50 watts uh, when it's been running earlier today. The, the LED lamp is pulling like 10 watts of power. Uh, I've got the GoPro charging right now. Uh, and so it's been under a pretty light load all day, but it's been running all day. So my entire desk here for when I've needed power has been running off of the battery pack, which is cool. Um, now, of course, when I go to recharge that, it's not renewable energy because it will just get charged off of the AC mains. but. Uh, it is cool to just to have the system running and to having it operate uh, and being able to continue to doing my work. So what what I would love to do is when I go to 3D print the enclosure for the battery pack back there, I would love to be able to run the 3D printer off of that battery pack while it runs for the however many hours it needs to run. Um, so I need this watt system to tell me how much current the the 3d printer is pulling or how many watts power it's pulling um, so that I can make a good guess of uh, will a print that I'm going to make be able to complete on however much power I can get out of the system um, if it's a 10 hour print and the printer is pulling 100 watts of power no that's not gonna work because that's only about 480 watts watt hours uh, but if it's pulling 100 watts of power and it only takes four hours to print, then yeah, uh, I can probably get that print pulled off without any without any stress. Um, and of course, if the battery runs out of juice and the printer shuts down, then the print is just wasted. Uh, there's no way for me to resume a print where it left off with my current printing setup. So I've rambled on enough. I've given you guys a chance to, to kind of see some of the assembly process and the design process and some of the iter iterization process of getting this system put together. I'm still got a little bit of work to do here to get it all finished it, finished up and buttoned up. But until then, I will see you guys in the next video.